Okay, hello everyone. So I'm sure you are all aware that the recent peace talks have not gone as well as we had planned, but we remain optimistic that this will not be the last of these talks with the DPRK. We are committed to finding a diplomatic solution to open talks with the DPRK and look hopefully with other countries in the region who still have expressed interest in these talks to assist us in reopening them into the, ne into the future. And the near future though, uh, the Republic of Korea's government is going to be pivoting our focus to tribal reform and other domestic policies. So if you have any questions on tribal reform and domestic policies, I can take those. Okay. Can you give me a general statement on the moonshine policy and what that aims to do? Uh, yeah, so the moonshine policy was the policy of our President Moon to uh, attempt to reach out to the People's Republic, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, diplomatically using humanitarian aid and agricultural programs. Uh, it was a policy that was the guiding principle of the resolution that we had written up, and uh, its main tenets are very similar to the Sunshine Policy, except uh, we are trying, attempting to establish a more uh, repeat, repetitive dialogue that can may be maintained. Do you have any other methods of communicating with the uh, North Korean uh, body? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs has uh, the ability to contact the DPRK. And we have sent out communiques to the DPRK in the past, and this recent uh, summit, although unsuccessful in coming with a concrete solution, was a good first step into establishing these diplomatic ties. The United States are extremely angered and disappointed by the actions taken in the most recent conference regarding the North Korean situation. Most of the nations present, though inviting us to participate in this conference on equal standing, seem to treat us as though our opinions and policies proposed were second rate to some of the countries that are present in the Korean Peninsula presently. To ensure international security in the region, the United States proposed policies that would, over time, lift economic sanctions and provide aid to North Korea in exchange for a ratcheting down of missile um, building by the North Korean regime and uh, um, the, the voluntary um, giving up of weapons of mass destruction by the Kim Jong-un regime. However, the delegates of China and the Republic of Korea seem more interested in granting humanitarian aid to the Democratic People's Republic of Korea without necessary concessions, just thus legitimizing and supporting the actions the illegal actions of this rogue regime. This, the lack of concessions proved that the delegates did not wish for their own security in the region. Yes? Why is it that the U.S. will not compromise on denuclearization as it relates to the Korean Peninsula? We are more than willing to compromise on denuclearization. However, we saw no efforts by any of the other countries present to delegitimize the illegal and rogue regime of North Korea and ensuring that the safety of their own citizens can be ensured in the region. The only way that North Korea, or sorry, South Korea and Japan can feel safe, and as an extension, the U.S., is if the um, missile production programs in North Korea are ratcheted down. We do not wish to incur um, denuclearization immediately. But we did wish that several of the other countries present would have supported us in our efforts to make sure that the region remains safe in the future. Um, why do you believe that the United States' opinions should be taken um, just as highly as those um, who geographically exist on the Korean Peninsula when the United States is not? Sure. The United States is head of the United Nations Command Force currently operating in the Korean Peninsula as adjudicated by a United Nations Security Council whose number I can't remember at the instant, I'm sorry. But this is why we feel that due to our presence in the demilitarized zone and the um, respect and authority we have been given by the Security Council in commanding this force in the region, we do feel as though we have a responsibility and the ability to um, take part in these talks. China. Good evening. 
To begin, the People's Republic of China would like to state their satisfaction with the peace summit conducted today because of the fact that it shows that we are at least taking these steps to establish peace on the Korean Peninsula. China is pleased by the fact that we are at least moving in the correct direction here. The PRC would like to, re to reassert their firm stance as only acting as a mediator in this conflict. In no way are they trying to push an individual agenda, unlike, <coughs> unlike other representatives who might have been present. But the, cap but the cabinet of the Chinese, um, the Chinese cabinet would like to reassert that they were displeased with some of the aggressive and unnecessary rhetoric that was used by the United States, but they uh, strongly commend the Russian neutrality that occurred during this summit. And the PRC would also like to reassure the international community that any and all suggestions that the uh, People's Republic of China is making during this summit are only made in order to further the process of peace in the Korean Peninsula by smoothing the, by uh, making it a smoother transition and a lasting process. Thank you. Yes. And you mentioned that the United States' uh, rhetoric was a bit aggressive. Would you mind elaborating? Um, we have no comment on that as of now. Yes? Is there currently discussion of potentially um, having another peace summit to um, finalize any details that were established during the, during the peace summit? Um, there hasn't been any discussion since the summit just, rendi just ended very recently, but the Chinese cabinet is very in favor of uh, furthering this process and, have, and holding another summit or another discussion. How does China respond to the comments made by the United States, uh, saying that you did not take their uh, you did not take their um, comments and suggestions seriously? Um, so the way that China would like to respond to that is simply that we didn't take them uh, we didn't take them seriously because they weren't realistic. Asking a country to denuclearize not only when it comes to weapons but also when it comes to power and resources, which could help build the country, is just simply not realistic in terms of the international community nowadays. And so the way we would just like to uh, respond is that the reason we weren't taking them seriously was because of the fact that what they were asking for just didn't seem plausible. And also because of the fact that it seems that by doing this, they were simply trying to assert their own um, agenda when it comes to... Thank you. So we'll now have our final speaker of press conferences for Simon 14. It is a disappointment to the Russian cabinet and the Russian Federation at large that we were summoned to the summit today to debate a futile piece of legislation that effectively institutes no substantive change into the volatile and explosive Korean Peninsula. No concessions were made, and that is not a manner in which Russia is willing to negotiate. We do respect the sovereignty of all nations, and we implore nations to leave their egos at the door when they come to the table, as our president stated. The Russian Federation is also pleased to announce new initiatives in renewable energy, which is important to diversifying our economy. This is vital to the creation of jobs within our great nation, as well as making strides towards advancements in our ambitious domestic agenda. We will be focusing on hydroelectricity to utilize the potential of our rivers, as well as the possibility of a geothermal system to further diversify and improve infrastructure in eastern Russia. Through the newfound focus on alternative sources of energy, research into the realm of GMOs, and our 84 billion ruble investment into Russia's IT sector, our cabinet has made significant strides in bettering the lives of our citizens. Questions? Isn't the Russian cabinet worried about the effect that renewable energy resources uh, in domestic parts would have on their current um, oil exports or oil? Absolutely not. Based on the fact that diversifying our economy, essentially, as I've stated time and time again in these press briefings, diversifying our economy moves us away from the state of being completely dependent on one resource that resource being oil and natural gas, that puts us into a, get, a condition of being a rentier state, which is dangerous, as we are then subject to the ebb and flow of the Western economy when we could be generating our own jobs and regulating our own economic forces. Does the Russian Federation plan on arresting any more delegates? Certainly not. In response to your question, we would like to issue a brief statement regarding the L Universal reporter. Her emotionally charged arguments completely undermine due process and law and order. That is indicative of the Russian Federation. How can you expect a sovereign entity to abstain from the rule of law? If you break the law, you are to face the consequences. So are you saying that the Russian Federation is in support of silencing free speech? Oh, certainly not. But the delegate, um, the, new, the reporter was convicted of libel, which is a crime in the Russian Federation, and she did serve her punishment. Thank you, delegate.
So at this time, we will be releasing you all. It's 5 o'clock. Thank you so much for your cooperation, your participation in these press conferences. They've been 